Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. Here's today's zinger. You know crochet kind of keeps me calm and it keeps me from unraveling unless it involves yarn chicken then you better watch out. <laughs> and without further ado let's get on with today's tutorial. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowdos. So this is my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. We have another genie pattern today called the Be Mine Chevron Blanket. We've got a little bit of texture, a little bit of fun and with color play it's really quite awesome. So we're going to be focusing on the chevron. She has this also in solid rows that will be coming up in the future as well as a square. So we'll be doing that. So we have a nice easy repeat once you get moving and the way that she designed this and is once you get moving she has all the color breakdown so that it's just very easy for you to be able to follow along and once we get through the repeat it then becomes quite simple for you to follow. So you can decide to do the color play. You can do solid color yarn. You could do self striping. It's up to you. To play you'll need a size 6 millimeter size J crochet hook and uh, we're gonna be using Red Heart with Love today. I'm going to be using the color just taupe and you can change the colors whenever you feel like you need to. You can change the size of this particular blanket by keeping them in multiples of 27 uh, plus 29. So 27 chains plus 29. So you can go 27, 27, 27 and once you're satisfied with it then you just add 29 and then you'll have the proper balance. You should know when you do a beginning chain like this because it's going up and down even though it's gonna be looking big as it goes across as a straight line once you get the up and down motion it does compress down. So the blanket that we're doing today is a 37 inch wide by 42 inches in height and we're going to be focusing on this today. So without further ado let's grab our hook now and yarn and let's play. Let's begin and you can chain 137 as per the pattern or you can do the multiples and let me just move you over a little bit so that you stay within the camera frame today. And I'm going to be doing the multiples of 27 and then adding 29 once I'm happy with it. So you're just gonna count out. So either do um, 137 or you can do the 27 which I'll do right now. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26 and 27. So that is one chevron right there but even though it's a straight line in this long once you bend it it becomes much more narrower. So just keep that in mind. So just keep doing your multiples of 27 and then when you're happy with it just add 29 to it or do the 137 and I'll be right back in a moment. So let's begin row number one. So after you have your total number we're going to begin and I can tell by the written pattern that we're going to go in the down motion and then up and then down and etc. And I can tell that because we're gonna put two stitches into the very first uh, section. So you want to go second chain from the hook. So just count back one, two and go to the second and you wanna put in two single crochets there. So that represents a partial of a peak and we'll talk about that later. Now we're going to do the next 12 to be single crochets. So let's do that. So let's count those out together. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So now that we have this 12 done we're going to skip the next two chains. So 1 and 2 and then you're gonna go on the third chain away and you're going to single crochet the next 12. So this indicates that it's gonna turn and, and go up. Okay, so skipping two, go to the third, start with that one and do the next 12. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 
11 and 12. So 12 went up. Now what we want to do in the very next stitch which is starting the repeat is you're going to have three single crochets. So it's three here in the middle peaks and it's only two on the edge because it's only a partial. Okay, so look at it from this perspective. So now that you got those three in the top you're gonna start in the very next one and go 12 single crochet down. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So because we're in the down motion we can tell because it's starting to bend that we in order to go back up you need to skip two stitches and do 12 going back up and you're gonna do this going up and down all the way. I'm coming close to the other side so um, just put me on pause and then wait until you get very close to the end and I'll show you what to do. So just put me on pause and I'll be right back. So I'm about to skip over two and then do my final before I get to an edge and so when you're ready for that we're gonna do that. So skipping two and you will single crochet the next 12 going back up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve and you should have one more stitch left, one more chain and in that chain there will be two single crochet. And that will get you all the way across on row number one which helps you get established. So let's turn our work and you can see the up and down motions have now happened in your project and we're going to begin number two next. Let's begin row number two. So we're going to start by chaining three and that will count as your first double crochet and in the same stitch where that's coming out of I need you to double crochet it once again. This is considered half of a uh, top of a peak. So we're gonna head on down and we're gonna do the next 12 in a row. Once you get used to this pattern you probably will not need to count but let's just count anyway just because we're starting and we'll do the next 12 as double crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So the two that are next should be the middle and see how they're leaning into each other right here. Those are the two and you're gonna skip immediately over those and then you're gonna start in the third one away and go back up the hill. So there'll be 12 going up. So if you can identify stitches you don't have to necessarily be so hard on yourself to count. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And if you could have identified which one is the middle one of the grouping at three at the top then you didn't need to count that either. So the, ne the next one is the middle one of the group so you're gonna put three double crochet in that. So we have one, two, and three. So you're just gonna move down the valley. So you're gonna go 12 down. You'll skip over the two middle ones and then you'll go 12 up and then at the top of the peak you, you'll put th uh, three double crochets and you're gonna go up and down. So what I'm gonna do is I'll meet you on the very last section of going up the hill just to make sure that you know how to finish. So please go up and down 
all the way to the end of the row and I'll see you at the end. I'm coming close to the end and I'm just coming up the hill and I'm just gonna be able to identify the, so there should be 12 going up and then the 13th stitch should be the last stitch that's available to you. You noticing that I'm not counting? I probably should. So just to let you know that I am. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And there should be one more stitch left which there is and that will have two double crochets because it's a half of a peak. And so that's row number two. So you'll turn your work and let's begin row number three. Let's begin row number three. So I'm gonna show you some cheating techniques. Chain two, this will count as a first stitch in this case and in the same post that's directly below, we want to apply double crochet front post around that. So we're gonna wrap the hook and go around that post on the front side here. It's a front post yarn over and then pull through two and two and this is going to create a ridge on the opposite side of the project. Now the next 12 that you will have will each be a front post double crochet. So you're going to skip over the two that are in the middle. You can really see it now and then you're gonna go up the next 12 here with the front post a double crochet and then in the top peak we're going to be doing something. What are we gonna be doing in the top peak there? It's three double crochet uh, front post in the next stitch. Okay, so let's do this. So starting in the very next post that's available to you, that's gonna be number one. So let's just count 12 down as a front post double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So this will take you to the ones that are right in the middle. So you'd be skipping those two and start on the third one away and going up twelve. I'll count it just to verify that we're doing this right. So we have one and if you can identify you don't need to count. So then we'll get two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So the twelfth one here takes you to the first one of the grouping of three at the top. So the middle one here which is next is going to have three uh, double crochet front posts in it. So we have one, two, and three. And so that will keep the ridge moving along. So now you're gonna go twelve down. You'll skip over the two middle, twelve up and you're gonna do then three double crochet front post into the peaks as I just showed you and I want you to do this all the way across and I'll meet you on the very last section just to make sure that you're finishing it off properly and I'll be right back in a moment. So 12 down, 12 up and three double crochets in the top peak. So just make sure you skip over those two middle ones at the base of a, of a valley and I'll be right back in a moment. As you're coming up all the way to on the other side you're gonna come right up and you are only doing 12 going up the hill but if you can identify your stitches you don't need to count. Okay, so let's take a look and we have two stitches left. So you're just gonna, this will be the twelfth one and if you don't believe me let's count those. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. On the very last one here we need to put in two double crochets, uh, sorry, two double crochet front post around the post. So we have one and two and that is your third row and you're gonna turn and you'll see the ridging that has been done. Let's begin the fourth row. So let's begin our fourth row and you're going to chain three which will count as a double crochet and in the same one that you're coming out of double crochet one more time. We gotta watch what we're doing here. We're gonna be creating um, 
crisscrossing but we're gonna be mixing it with regular stitches as well. So we're gonna start with the crisscross. So we're gonna skip the first one, go to the second over and double crochet and then come into the one that you skipped and you just wanna come in from the back side of it and just go like that so it becomes overlaid. The next one is gonna be one double crochet by itself just like that and then we're going to uh, start again with the crisscross. So skipping the next one, go to the one after it, double crochet and just shift your project forward so that you can access the one that you skipped with your double crochet. It's a very fast process. So now you're gonna go and double crochet the next one and then crisscross again. So skipping the next one, go to that one and come into the one you skipped and then single crochet in the next. So Jeannie's not having us crisscross everything which speeds us up quite nicely. So we're gonna, now that this one's by itself, the next one is a crisscross and then the very final stitch of the going down is just one double crochet by itself and that will take you to the two middle that are gonna sit lonely by themselves at the base. So once you skip over those two, you're going to sink, uh, you're going to um, double crochet the next one, sorry about that. And then you're gonna start your crisscross in the next two. So crisscross and you're gonna do this all the way back to the top of the, to the peak. So the, you crisscross, so the next one is one double crochet by itself and then crisscross. and then one double crochet by itself and then crisscross. One double crochet by itself and then crisscross. And we have to pay attention to where we are. So the crisscross will be the last one before the top peak and if you look at it, see the grouping of three? That means that this is the middle one of that grouping of three and in that one we need to make sure that we put in three double crochet so that it will turn the peak and go down the other side. So let's just cover going down once, once more and back up and I will be at the edge when I come back up the other side. So the first two are gonna be used as a crisscross and so the next one is gonna be what? It's gonna be a double crochet by itself. And then we have a crisscross. And then the next one is a double crochet by itself. Okay, crisscross. And a double crochet by itself. And what I wanna do is I just wanna pay attention to where the, the, the bottom of the valley is because it gives me an indication of where I am stitch wise. So I have, you can see the two middle, so I have one stitch left and that's one solo double crochet by itself in order to keep the pattern going. So I'll skip over the two middle and I'll start on the third one with the double crochet by itself and so you'll be doing this going up and down. So eventually you'll hit the edge so just put me on pause now if you need to, need to and I will show you how to finish the edge. And then one double crochet by itself and crisscross the next. one double crochet by itself and then crisscross the next one double crochet by itself and then crisscross the next. So what I need to point out to you is that the very final, remember that chain two that we started with? That is actually a stitch and it's right here. So in that particular stitch we're just gonna put two double crochets in it. And that would be how you would finish row number four. And what I want to do is that we're, we're now at the end of doing a colored transition. So what I want to do is kind of fasten this off and I'll show you how to do that next. To fasten off your yarns and to keep it within the stitch uh, things that Jeannie has, you can keep the color going if you wish and don't bother. But I would recommend that you would handle your tails at the same time just because it's easier because when you get to an ended project and you have a lot of tail ends it can be kind of frustrating. 
for some people. Me, I find it kind of therapeutic, but you know, I'm a different kind of <laughs> person. So I just wanna weave in my ends a total of three times. Go right and split fibers. When you do that, if you go in between the strands, it will come out on you. But if you go in between fibers and split fibers with your needle, it's, it's very difficult to pull out. And what I'm going to do is just trim. And so I will turn my work and get ready and we'll begin row number five and I wanna take you back to the instructions. So in the instructions, Jeannie has us here. So the one to fourth row was color A. So I can check it off that I'm done. The fifth row is the color B and then the sixth to the eighth row are color C and the ninth row is B. And you will notice that B is a common, uh, common uh, color that will be used to help separate this. So when we do this in the future, I have not gone through the complete repeat yet, but the repeat will be doing our rows number two through five and then you're changing the colors as per the checklist that we have and that that's what we're gonna do. So I just gotta take you through one more row to show you the final repeat which is row number five. So let's begin number five and I'm just going to attach my yarn to the first stitch. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to, you can either attach chain one and put two single crochets in here or if you put it onto the hook right now, this is called the standing single crochet. So if you put it on the hook before you insert it into the hole, you can just pull through and then you'll have two loops and then you'll pull through two. And that is a standing single crochet. So that consider, that's considered one of two and then put another single crochet there. So just make sure you have two single crochets into the first one. We're now going to do one double crochet back post around the next stitch. Okay, so it's right stri straight below. The ones that crisscross are the ones that you kinda wanna keep an eye on. So the next one is right directly below. Let's do a back post, double crochet. So wrap the hook, come from behind. Just grab that post and then go back to the behind. I like to just put my strand over so that I can trap it and then double crochet. So it's kind of an easy idea that Jeannie has for us. So the crisscross here is next. So those are always gonna be single crochets. So one and two. So there's a crisscross is equal to two crochets. So it's gonna be uh, one single crochet in each. And then you got the one post that's by itself and that's again going to be a back post double crochet. So these posts that are by themselves become a back post double crochet in this row. Here's another crisscross. So you're just going to put in a single crochet in each of those and then jump on back down. There's one by itself and make that a back post double crochet. Okay. Now we just wanna keep an eye to where it comes together at the very base. We're gonna be skipping over those two middle stitches. So you're just gonna do the same thing going all the way but you're going to ignore those two that are directly in the middle. So the next one here is a single crochet in each of those. It's on top of a crisscross. And then you're gonna jump on down and make a back post double crochet. Okay, and then the next one it's a crisscross. So you make those double, uh, one single crochet each. And you can see that you're at the middle point. So these two in the middle you're going to ignore and you're gonna immediately come to this crisscross over here and you're just going to apply one single crochet in each because it's a crisscross. Nice and easy. So here's one by itself. So you'll make that as a back post double crochet. And then the next two here is part of a crisscross. So make those one single crochet each. And then jump on down and do your back post double crochet. And do one single crochet each. And then come on down. And you're working your way all the way back to the top of the peak. Now you have the three that are in the top of the peak. So the first one that are that is part of the three is going to be a back post double crochet. And then there's gonna be a, a whack, meaning a lot, going in the next stitch. So the next one is the very top. So we're going to start with a single crochet first and then we're going to apply a bobble here. So the bobble is going to consist of yarning over and you're going to insert into the stitch the same one as this, the first single crochet and you're going to pull through, 
pull through two and hold it. You're gonna do that a total of three times. So just yarn over and into the same, pull through, pull through two, and then yarning over, going in, pull through, pull through two and hold. You should see four loops on the hook. So you're going to yarn over, pull through all four, but you're not done with this stitch. You're going to apply another single crochet to create the balance of the peak. So the peak consists of one single crochet, one bobble, one single crochet. And now you're gonna work your way down the other one. So here's the third one of the grouping of three from the row below. So you're gonna start with the back post double crochet. And then you see the crisscross. So you're gonna have to make those one single crochet each. And you're just gonna work your way all the way down until you get to the bottom. You're gonna skip over those two middle ones like we talked about before. And you're gonna do that all the way across. And then when you get to the next uh, peak, it'll be the same thing. One single crochet, one bobble, one single crochet. And when you turn it around, that's what it looks like. So lots of the texture here. So what I'm going to do is that I'll meet you at the end of this row. Um, because of an outtake that I did do, the color of the yarn will change uh, to a lighter pink and that's just because I screwed up on the peak itself. So I will see you at the end of the row in just a moment. To come up the other side, you're just going to match the stitching that you see. So that it's a crisscross so it has to be a single crochet each. And then you got your back post double crochet. And you're just coming up the other side as you normally would. So these rows that I'm doing right now are always gonna be just one solid color that every time you do it, it keeps the consistency but you can decide what works for you. So once you get close to the top, you're gonna have the two stitches. So the next one is a back post double crochet and the very last turning chain here is going to be two single crochets because it's the edge. And then when you turn you around, you will see the texture work. You'll see a bobble at the top of the peaks and you'll see that's happening. So now you can go back to rows uh, number two through five and keep repeating that over and over. So let me take you back to the instructions. So in the instructions row number five is done with B so you can fasten that yarn off. I've already shown you how to do it and then you can add new yarn to do the sixth to eighth row. So essentially what you're doing is that up here you're repeating the second to the fifth row over and over and over. So if you kind of what I would kind of think about doing if it were me and you weren't watching me I would kind of think okay this grouping here is the two to five. The next one is two to five and that may help you just to keep a, a count of that and you can check it off on your sheet as you go. The only thing that's left here is that we have an edging and the edging is only applied to both sides if you wish and I'll just quickly demonstrate what that is. So usually in these kind of ideas, the people like to have a border. I would not necessarily do it but that's not me and usually the top and the bottom of these things, it looks amazing but the side edges, people wanna have the refined look. So what Judy is asking you to do is just worry about the side edge only. Have the right side facing up which is the texture side. You'll notice the other side is flat so that's the wrong side. So this is the right side. So you're just gonna start off in the very base of it and you're going to just do a single crochet. So I'm gonna do a standing single. You can use whatever color it makes you happy and you're just gonna just stay within the stitch work itself and just equally space out your single crochets going all the way down the edge. And if this makes you happy, it's a great idea and if you don't wanna do it, that's okay too. Just nice to have options. And then once you get to the other side, you're just gonna fasten in, uh, fasten off, weave in your ends and then you're good to go. If you see that it's pulling it, it means that you're going too quickly. Uh, you're spreading the stitches too far apart and if you see that it's starting to ruffle out like a ruffle of a dress, then it means that you're going too slow. So you wanna kinda look at the distance of what these stitches are and kinda match that distance here on the side edge and that would be how you do it. So this is a really cool idea. It's a nice simple, just one of those ones to throw on the television and enjoy the stitch work and you can have something just as, as amazing as Jeannie's concept. So this is uh, <laughs> a great little project and it's called Be Mine Crochet Blanket. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.